Hey guys, I'm Jesper and I created the code and I got a lot of messages from people saying how did you do that and I was trying to tell it using the, the text but didn't really work so I guess why not just make videos on how I did some stuff I'm not just gonna cover everything because that would be way too boring um, but I can show you some of the stuff I did let's just start with getting into creative here because I am still in survival just <laughs> allow cheats and then you can set yourself to game mode 1 now let's have a look this is the behind the scenes of the code it's a lot of redstone it's not that hard though it's just trial and error and then you will find out what you what you have to do to fix it but what I do want to talk about is NBT tags because spawners like these and chests and all that stuff and the command blocks they contain NBT tags. These are the way uh, Minecraft stores its special data, let's call it that. So what this spawner is doing is not just spawning a mob, it is, uh, it is spawning the anvil and cake. So if I break this, it will just respawn. Now, a lot of people ask me, how did you do that? Um, I use NBT Edit for that. It's a mod. Just uh, look at. Uh, actually, there is a tutorial. I'll just put a link in the description from uh, Q Magnet. He made a tutorial on how to install NBT Edit. And well, yeah, just install that, and then you can do this to edit all the tags. Now, just to make sure uh, I cover everything, I'm just going to delete the spawner and I'm just going to show you how I did it. So, let's uh, I first spawn an anvil. Just grab an anvil here. And now you want to have the, the if you want to know like, this, this got ID 145, so if you want to see that just Hit F3 and H, and if you do that, it will start showing you this these numbers. Now, let's let's just start with giving ourselves a spawner. Put it here. There's a redstone through there actually, but that, that doesn't matter. Okay, now it is just spawning pigs. We don't want it to spawn pigs. We want it to spawn falling sand. How do you do that? Well. First, you need to position. So I use this, then set my spawn point here, and just kill myself. Because if you do that and you hit MBT at me, you can see all your own tags. And then there's this tag called POS from position, and just copy that, or just use Control C. Um, why is it failed? It's weird. Okay, let's just hope he saved it. And now we are just going to modify some of this stuff. Let's call this, we don't want it to spawn pigs, we want it to spawn falling sand. And we want some custom tags such as the position. So we'll create a new tag compound by clicking on this one and then just paste the position in there. So now it's going to spawn uh, falling sand on there but you won't really see it because it spawns only once every now and then just so to edit that we can edit these tags here and now it will spawn every tick which is 20 times a second and as you can see there is sand on here only downside is that it is spawning even when I'm here so what we want to do is we want to edit the, the player range. So if I'm walking there, it should stop spawning. So let's just say, wait, let's just make this five or something, I don't know. And as you can see, it only spawns when I'm here, but it's actually not putting a block down. That is because it needs some t more tags. Um, it created these spawn potentials automatically. That's just the way Minecraft works. You can delete it and edit this one, or you can edit 
spawn potentials itself, but you will have to go into a lot of text. So here it is, properties. I won't do that. I'm just gonna do this. Add a new tag byte called time and set it to one or more, but one is good. And now it is spawning the sand. As you can see, it's actually putting a lot of drops out there. We don't want that either to happen. So that's why we are gonna ta add a tag called oh, drop item. Wait, what's it called? Drop item? Like if you don't know uh, what a tag is called, what I usually do is go to Minecraft Wiki and search for chunk format. And then you can see like all the, the entities and blocks. So now I'm just gonna search for falling sand. And then I can see that there is a tag and it's called drop item. So I was right and just set it to zero. So now it won't drop any. Oh my God, those are a lot of them. Okay, so now as you can see it's spawning uh, sand and not dropping an item. The only downside is it is sand and we want it to be an anvil. Oh wow, actually some stuff got into the hopper there. Okay, so the anvil is um, got ID 145. So we'll tell him to spawn anvils instead of sand. So, okay, well, I'm just gonna forget that. So 145. And call it a tile ID. So now it will be spawning an anvil. Yep, there it is. It's an anvil. But I want it to spawn cake as well. Now you can add some more spawners there, but I think that's a bit laggy and yeah, I just don't really want that. So what you can do, now this is where the spawn potentials jump in. Basically what this is, it takes the spawn data and converts it into this spawn potentials. You'll have a lot of, you can like set, oh, oh, not in there. Just copy paste the tag compound and now what it's gonna do, every time it spawns something, it's gonna create this new, uh, it's gonna change the spawn data into some other thing you put in here and then you can uh, change the weights to set it to, uh, if you wanted to spawn this tag a lot and this not so much, then you can put it a little bit lower. But first we got to uh, get the ID from cake. Now you might think that's 354, but that's not true because this is actually uh, the item itself. Actually, if you want the, the real cake, you're gonna have to search on Minecraft Wiki again, or Minecraft data values is what I use, minecraftdatavalues.com. It's really handy actually, you can just search for it and then you'll find out that it's actually got the ID 92. So yeah, you can see it's different. This got an item and, well, they both, both do the same, but so yeah, let's just set it to 92. And we'll do that with this one, 92, and with this one as well. Now it's gonna spawn cake on the same position twice. It's not really useful. As you can see, it's spawning, trying to spawn cake there. And, well, yeah, there it is, cake. But we want it to spawn over here, so we're gonna take that slab again, put it on here, and now let's just go kill ourselves. Grab the position, save it, and put it in there. And we'll put it in the second tag right here because that's what the cake is. Delete this one, we don't need that anymore and paste the new one in there. So now it is not spawning anything actually because there's still a slab over there. But now it is actually spawning. Now we need the, the second cake. So kill yourself again. And copy the position. 
and paste it in here. But this time we'll use the third tag because that's the last one we didn't edit. So now, as you can see, it is spawning an anvil in the middle. And no cake, no cake. <laughs> yeah, and there's cake. There's cake. So yeah, that's the way I do that. Um, next time I'll be showing you how to create the room disappear as well as the spawning items on the floor here or actually as well as the, the paper on there so I'm just gonna tell you how to spawn items so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, actually I hope you learned something from it because I would love to see more maps like the code with all these mpt tags and stuff it's, it's really good what Mojang did to Minecraft uh, lately with, with all that with the command blocks and stuff it's really uh, done a, a great job for map makers so yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time